the 0 the 8 brain partition functions. And um, it's based on some uh, upcoming work uh, with Nikita Nekrasov, and also related to some uh, other work that uh, Nikita himself did uh, last year. And, um, OK, another title for this, um, for this could be Magnificent Four with Color. And uh, as uh, you will uh, see during uh, the talk, uh, the, the, word, uh, the word four stands for that because we have four complex dimensions. And the word, uh, oops, sorry. And the word magnificent stands for the belief uh, that uh, four complex dimension is somehow the highest possible one uh, where one can play this, uh, this type of games. And my main goal during this, uh, this talk is to present uh, some conjecture for some supersymmetric partition function. Actually, it will be twisted, as we will see. So I denote the twist by this uh, group element G. And uh, the, 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 the system I'm considering is a system of uh, K D0 brains that are in the slowly moving approximation. And they're moving in the background of uh, N D8 brains, which are in flat space. So along RT times R8, with uh, a constant B field turn on, as I, I will be more precise in the, in the, in the rest of the talk. But uh, OK, the, the, the statement is that this object, which, this object, which I call zeta k and for n d8, in the, in, the, in the operator formalism, of course, I can write it as a, as a Witten index, as a character valued Witten index. So h k is some Hilbert space. Of, of the appropriate quantum mechanics. Minus 1 to the f is a fermion number. The twist is by g. And then I also put uh, the Hamiltonian. Actually, the system is supersymmetric, so it, won't be, it will not depend on, on the temperature beta. But in principle, one can, uh, can write it. So the main, uh, uh, OK, one, one can ask why, what, what is the motivation for um, to look at these, uh, these problems. And one is that, uh, I mean, this. Uh, one, one could be interested uh, in studying the bound states uh, of the brains. Uh, for example, uh, I mean, the 0, the 4, the 0, the 6, the 0, the 8 are all uh, interesting, um, interesting topics to look at. And this is just the character valued um, version of those, uh, of those computations. And uh, moreover, there is a connection. So this, um, the D0 brains, uh, as a, seen as probes uh, on, the, on the D8 uh, world volume, can be taught uh, as uh, some sort of generalized instantons for some uh, eight-dimensional gauge theories. For example, uh, the ones that have been studied by Singer et al. a few years back. Actually, there will be a close parallel, since in that paper, they will, uh, I mean, already before them, Corrigan et al. classified that uh, to go in eight dimensions, to have an analog of instantons equation, you have to pick a special holonomy, which can either be SU4 or spin 7. This case, uh, the case that we'll deal with, will uh, we'll have a parallel with SU4. And uh, with a more modern uh, and, and also maybe mathematical perspective, this is related to Donaldson Thomas uh, counting for, uh, say, Calabia toric Calabiao 4 folds. Although I will be doing only C4, in principle, this is a generalization for the, for the toric cases. And so the, the conjecture is that this uh, zeta. Once uh, I construct, uh, once I assemble it in a generating function, so sum over k from 0 to infinity, some pk and the, the same zeta k, admits uh, a simple, uh, can, can be written as a platistic exponent. And I mean, the fact that it is a platistic exponent is, could be trivial because I, I can always take the, the platistic exponent, but that, that the simple function will appear there. So only finitely many numbers I need to fix the, to determine it for every n. So I call this function fn. Yes, yes. So g is some group element which lives in a, global, in a group of global symmetries of the problem. I will talk a lot about this. I, will, uh, I mean, if you are familiar, it will be with this type of things. It will be in terms of omega background parameters and so on. Coulomb branch parameters will be a function of those. Um. So yeah, yeah, I will uh, make it more precise in a, in a second. Yeah, yeah. Yes? Yes, yes, I will. Somehow, yes, because, uh, for example, I mean, this goes back, uh, I mean, I can tell you that there is a nice paper that talks about this, even if it's not the, the, the first to, 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 to discover it. They, they have a very nice description. It's a paper by Ori et al. 
where they discuss, uh, I mean, this, uh, this uh, I will come to this, it's uh, n equal to two supersymmetric quantum mechanics, and so yes, the, okay, I, that's a little bit of a spoiler, but uh, basically there will be boundary terms on the, on, the, on, the, on the supersymmetric integration, and these boundary terms will be responsible for wall crossing. So for example, you could ask me, what, what will be the wall crossing for the case with B-field and without B-field? That would be an interesting question. Or dependence on the, the Fayette-Iliopoulos term. This sort of question, yes, yes. It's, um, it's peculiar to this. Um. So, um, yeah. And, uh, okay, another, term, another way of looking at this is that uh, this, this slowly moving approximation is the same thing as uh, basically taking the alpha prime to zero limit. At the same time, rescaling the B field as, uh, say, alpha prime B remains constant. And, this, and, and, one, and, and one would like to, to study what is the effective action for this system. So, okay, I call, I mean, the, this slide is meant to, to clarify a little bit more the, the setup that I already talked about. I call it ADHM quantum mechanics because, uh, I mean, it's, it's not exactly ADHM, it's some generalization of ADHM. And, uh, yeah, it's a quantum mechanics because, uh, we are looking at the theory on the world volume of D0, so just, there's just time. And uh, first of all, like, like you already pointed out, the D0 D8 system, can be, and, 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 and as is described by, for example, a paper by Witten, is a supersymmetric both with and without the B field, so it makes sense to study the BPS bound states uh, in both cases. And I will focus, uh, the, the, main, the focus of my, of my talk will be the case with B field. So I take uh, this, uh, the D8, I take n of them, and I, I have a stack along R8, and then I consider KD0 brains, and uh, worry about what, 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 what uh, kind of bound state they can form. And I take my B field along the same R8. In particular, there will some over uh, for A from one to four. I, I, I have four planes, so I take B field diagonal in these four planes. And uh, like I said, I will be considering the theory on the world volume of the D0. Actually, since, uh, my expression, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about the Witten index. I will first go to the Euclidean, so this RT is Euclidean, and then I, I will put, a, put it on a circle of reduced beta. And then it's uh, some supersymmetric quantum mechanics. It's actually gauged, so it's like a gauge sigma model in one dimension. The gauge group will be UK, where K, I repeat, is the number of D0, and then it will have n equal to two supersymmetry. And uh, if we look at, again, at the effective action, the field content can come from two types of massless strings, either D0 D strings stretching from D0 D0 brains or strings stretching from D0 D8 brains. And uh, so the, the, the other question was about G. I denote uh, this little G as an element of the global symmetry group, which I call G flavor, and I, I will explain what it is for this, uh, for this particular model. And, uh, yeah. So let's see. Let's, let's come actually to that, uh, to that question. What are, the what are the symmetries of this problem? Uh, in principle, so this G flavor could be, uh, so this G flavor has various factors. There's an SU4, which uh, is the SU4 inside spin eight. So the R8 has a spin eight, but we have to take SU4 in order to preserve the two supercharges that we had before. And then there are two UN, the first UN, small n, I, I call u n capital N. This uh, n is like a, meant to remember, to, to remind the Champaton bundle of D8. So it's the, the symmetry group of uh, n D brains, n D8 brains, Champaton bundle. And then there is another u n, so same small n, but uh, I denote it with sub capital M. This, this guy, this, this u n is not manifest in the geometry. And uh, so in, in the next few slides I will motivate how it comes about, and there is also a specula speculative interpretation of how it may come, and is that uh, one could in introduce in this system another stack of uh, N anti-D8 brains, uh, and that M will be their Champaton bundle, so same dimension N, small n. And then, I, I, I mean, I don't know how to prove this, that's why I, I wrote speculative, is that then uh, by, you, you may object that this is not supersymmetric, but somehow in the presence of B field, this can have some tacking condensation and go to another, decay to another vacuum where it is supersymmetric and where this is the quantum mechanics. Although I don't know how to prove this, so I, I just, uh, I, I have another, uh, there is another way of going about it. But let me first uh, dis describe how I parameterize. So this uh, G flavor has a Cartan torus, and I parameterize by parameters QA, A from one to four, which span is uh, the SU4. 
and so they, they have to product to one. Then uh, the Coulomb, let's call it Coulomb branch, this is a big N, I parameterize by small n alpha, alpha from one to n. And then same for uh, these, uh, let's call them fundamental masses, I call them M alpha, again, alpha one to n for this uh, bundle M. And uh, yeah, it will, it will uh, more than a remark, is a reminder that uh, we already broke SO19 to SO8, so there will be a, a transverse U1, tra transverse to this, uh, to this plane. And then SO8 to SO4 for the reason, SU4 to the, for the reason that I described. And uh, just because I will list the field content in the next slide, just I remind here that the eight spinner of SO8 goes to the four plus four bar, and the eight conjugate spinner goes to the six plus one plus one. So this will uh, have a, yes? Why? Yeah, yeah, I will, I will motivate it uh, in, a, in a different way, in, in actually in my next, uh, it will be related to this transverse U1, that, that's actually anomalous, yes. And uh, yeah, the, and, and this is, I mean, this remark is useful because the D0, D0 sector will be just the dimensional reduction of young mills from nine plus one dimensions, so you just break this group and you can directly write the field content. And this Q are uh, what is uh, the usual, fa the familiar omega background, uh, is just the exponential of the epsilon. And I complexify everything because that's, that's a lot. And I mean, that's possible and that's useful. Um, okay, so now the field content. Uh, let me go slowly about this. So in the first uh, column, I want to, I'm, I'm listing uh, uh, the, the, the content in the language of the quantum mechanics. So there is an equal to two supersymmetric quantum mechanics, and in general, there may be vector multiplet, um, there's a vector multiplet, chiral multiplets, and Fermi multiplets. So let's start, from, let's start from the vector. The vector comes from the D0, D0 sector. That's what I mean by stringy origin. And the field content is uh, two adjoint matrix, matrices, A sub T, which is the gauge connection uh, in the original D0, D0 problem, and what I call phi nine, which is the scalar in, in the nine direction. So they are, all these guys are, and, and they're fermions, so eta, which I call eta and chi. I, I won't write actions, so this probably is useless, but, uh, and uh, usually one uh, actually complexifies these two guys into a complex, into a complex valued uh, connection. Like I said, these are all K by K matrices for, for K, the zero brain sector. So as a, as a content, as a representation content of UK times G flavor, they are in the joint of UK. And it's also useful to introduce uh, the vector spaces uh, which I actually already introduced here, N and M. So in, in terms, and I also introduced a, a vector space uh, capital K, which is K-dimensional, and then this, just to say that these guys, A, T, and Phi, and all the others, are living in endomorphism of K. And then uh, there was a question about, uh, so I will uh, finally come to the, this, uh, this, the zero anti gate system. So let's, uh, in, also there is another U1, which is a global U1, and which is anomalous, and uh, the charges of the fields uh, I also list there to, to show you that there is an anomaly and such that I will introduce something to compensate it. So it's not a, a gauge anomaly, so it's not, uh, the system is not broken, it's just that the correlators otherwise will be zero. And uh, so for these two guys, uh, A plus minus phi, say the complex combinations, the charge is plus minus two, and it's minus one for these fermions. Yes? Yes? Yeah, so that the measure of the, you, you write a, a path integral for the quantum mechanics, uh, and the, the, mesh, the, the, the integrants in the measure will transform with this U1 charge. So, 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 sorry? You can think of, of it as like a ghost anomaly if you want. Or it, I mean, these charges, you can read uh, as the charges of the field in the transverse direction. So this is that interpretation. And then once you write down, I mean, the Witten index that I wrote before, you can write in the path integral language, and the, the, the measure, many of the, all these fields will appear in the measure, and that measure will transform. So that's what I meant. That's what I meant. In. You can actually, you're not forced to introduce this, because now you can evade it in another way, which is giving a, which you do anyway, which is giving a, a, a weight, a weight of this type also to the omega background parameters, but one way to, to, to avoid it is to introduce uh, an auxiliary system, which I will later call Upsilon. It's just a decouple Fermi multiplet, and that does the job of, uh, so at the level of, uh, of uh, inserting uh, some 
observable in the partition function, you're inserting some churn classes weighted by, weighted by those masses M that I, that I talked about before. It's like you make an extra insertion to, to make the observables non-zero. That would be a way to, I don't know if this satisfies you. Yeah, okay, I don't, I don't have another explanation, it's just the, the major plus one this week. Anyhow, the other uh, relevant multiplets are the chiral multiplets, and they, come, they have two origins. So one comes from the zero to zero sector, and again I have, uh, so from the zero to zero sector, the main players will be these matrices, B sub A and, and its dagger. The, this index A will, always, be lived, will always live in the four of SU4, and again, they are K by K matrices, so they used, their representation content is the joint for UK and the four of SU4. And another way of phrasing this is that each BA will live in endomorphism K and, and their fermions. And then from the zero to eight, there is a, so for an S sect, okay, let me say for first, for Ramon sector, you have a bunch of fermions, which will always be there even without B field. But now because of B field, you have a, a, a Massless state in the Neveshvat sector, which I call I and I dagger. And uh, they will live uh, in the B fundamental of UK times the first UN, N. So K times N bar. And again, another way of in thinking in terms of vector spaces, they will each I. So I will live in OM NK and I dagger OM KN. And for all these chiral guys, the bosons will have charge zero and the fermions will have charge plus one. And uh, finally, there are a bunch of Fermi multiplets. One, uh, a, a Fermi multiple, many Fermi multiplets coming from the zero to zero sector, which I call chi AB. Again, they are K by K matrices, so they, stay, they live in the adjoint of UK. And then in the six, which I should remind you of the previous decomposition that I reminded you here. So the, the four are the fermions here, and the six is this here. So you could complain that chi AB, the index AB runs from one to four, but there is a constraint that chi AB is equal, say, to epsilon ABCD chi DC dagger. So this gives you the six of SU4. And uh, another way of phrasing this is that they stay in, they are living in endomorphism of K with pi, I mean, some projection because they are fermions. And similarly, and, and, so, and so they have charge under DC one minus one. And if you add the charges, you see that if you introduce uh, now, if another Fermi multiplet, which we call Upsilon and Upsilon dagger, which is with its uh, auxiliary boson, this time valued in the bifundamental of uh, UK and another UN, which uh, is what we, I hope it's readable, is this UN sub M, with charge minus one, then these charges are canceled. And so we, uh, we just add this, uh, this auxiliary system to, the, to our cohomological field theory. And again, it's, one can say that it's valued in homomorphism of M to K. So this is more or less my field content. Sorry? Can you say again? What is the U1? This one? Ah, no, these charges you can just read, uh, I think you can uh, read by observing that this U1 is the transverse one. To the, to the R8 plane, so this should be the correct charges of the field, and then this, this circle one, you assign it. And yet another, okay, now I, I think about yet another, uh, yet another argument is that, uh, so this minus one, I mean minus one times K times N times two, because there is a Upsilon and nu da, and Upsilon dagger, so this is minus two KN, and this precise the virtual dimension of the moduli space that I will, of the instant moduli space that I will come in the, so that's another, way of checking that this uh, should, be, should have that dimension. I will, I will come to that uh, in a moment. So, yeah, uh, instead of, uh, okay, like I said, uh, I mean, the, ac the action will have uh, a 0 to 0 sector, which is just reduction, and a 0 to 8 sector, which you can, for example, compute, a, which will have kinetic terms, and then a scalar potential. The, the interesting part is actually the scalar potential. So let's uh, go on the X branch, namely, X branch means that uh, there will be a complexified connection and we go to the branch where this uh, AT say plus phi is zero. And then we can read off this uh, scalar potential and we, it will be positive and it will be the sum of squares. 
So I wrote here the first term is trace uh, SAB, S dagger AB, A less than B from 1 to 4, where this first term is, uh, just involves uh, the D0, D0 sector, namely it involves those matrices that I just introduced BA. It's like commutator of B, ABB, plus epsilon ABCD, BCBD dagger, and it's actually, self, it's actually related to itself in this way. And you can see here already that the SU4 tensor appears, this epsilon ABCD, which, I mean, which means that uh, this guy won't be invariant uh, under full SO8, but we have to pick an holonomy, and we pick, we special, we pick SU, SU4. So th this is just, I mean, it's, it's not we pick, it's like the system picks it for us. And uh, the second term is trace uh, some uh, real moment map that comes from the D term in the, in the vector multiplet, which I call mu r. And uh, we can actually, actually, V10 uh, itself uh, instructs us that to, to do so, that uh, in the presence of B field, we are allowed to introduce a Fayetti Leopoldus term, which I write, uh, which I denote by zeta. So we take it positive for reason that uh, will be clear also later. And this mu r now is uh, cross, as cross terms with the 0, D8. So it's uh, sum of the commutators and plus i, i dagger, where i is, is, are the D 0, 8 uh, matrices that I introduced before. And now, this, uh, the moduli space I was talking before is this M, which is just uh, the zero set of the, of the scalar potential, mod mod modded out by UK gauge transformations, where the UK action is the obvious, I mean, is the one that I introduced before, so the B transforms uh, in the joint and the I transforms with the factor. And uh, on this space, uh, okay, I will, have, I will have a few comments about this, but let me first say that, uh, first of all, it's uh, quite clear that uh, on the space of, of solutions to these equations, the B A is commute, which, come, uh, which comes uh, from the first piece. You can manipulate this SAB and SAB dagger using the epsilon and so on, and you will, uh, this will imply that all the terms, uh, I mean, that uh, all these terms alone should vanish, so that it's a simple computation. So B A is commute, as uh, is the case in, uh, in the Zilber scheme of points uh, stories. And the second one is uh, that you can I mean, mu itself has to be equal to zeta, so we can trace it, and so it, we discover that uh, the IA dagger is non, must, uh, must be non-zero and must be equal to k times zeta, where zeta is the fi. And uh, on, again, on this space, uh, which is the space uh, whose virtual dimension is, say, real is 2kn I was talking about before, there's a stability condition type that holds, uh, and is that uh, we can take, uh, so for every vector v in a capital K, that we can take, capital K is that K dimensional space I, I just introduced. You can, f there exists a, a polynomial F in four variables, Z1, Z4, and a vector V in N, N is the other relevant vector space, such that this equation is satisfied. So F of B1, B2, B3, B4, applied to I, applied to V, is equal, can generate all these. You can generate all these in this way. So now, okay, this curly line is meant the following. I'm, I mean, this, uh, this type of condition is uh, very reminiscent if you are, for example, familiar with the D0, D4 case, namely the four-dimensional gauge theories. This will be the Hilbert scheme of points uh, on a, say, say for n equal one, so n, capital N, one dimensional. This will be the Hilbert scheme of points of, of C2. And this type of, uh, so for example, if we denote the map phi as uh, this map here, then there is a correspondence by kernel phi and the ideals uh, and vice versa. Mo in, I mean, vice versa into, into this space of equations. So this, I mean, this is not a proof, but this is somehow meant uh, to suggest uh, that in this case, uh, the space, uh, I mean, this can be proved, it will be the Hilbert scheme of points of C4, and in a, in a higher end will be a, a, a generalization thereof. And uh, as uh, in 2D, the, the, now the torus fixed uh, points of this space uh, was the, the ideas parameterized by the partitions, in this case, uh, like I say again, this is not a proof, that's why you're at this curly arrow and I will come back to it. But this, in this case, the relevant, um, the relevant fixed points of, uh, of my actions will be the solid partitions, so four dimensional partitions, and moreover will be colored because uh, in general the rank n, small n, is uh, rank n, so I take color solid partition. So that just mean to suggest uh, that we should uh, think about this uh, solid partition and, and that's meant to motivate my next slide, which is uh, an introduction, a, a, a brief reminder of this, um, of this, uh, of this story. So we can think, uh, oh, let me see. Ah, 
Ah, and also, yeah, it's very important, uh, I forgot to mention that uh, the silver, I mean, in general, this space, uh, and uh, already the, the case n, n equal one, the Hilbert scheme of C4 is very different from C2. I mean, it's, it's not smooth, uh, it's not hyperkähler, it's not scalar, it's just maybe symplectic quotient, so it may be much more singular, but still we can, this type of localization goes through and the fixed point one can extract and are these solid partitions. So there are many analogies with four dimensions, but up to a certain point. For example, in, four, in uh, the zero D4, this zeta is, uh, somehow is, uh, is playing the role of desingularizing in that space. But here, Hilbert of C4 for I, I, enough, I enough K is already singular, is, is, not, is uh, not irreducible. So there are some differences, just, just to point out. So now the solid partition, let's, uh, Yes, yes. 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 You mean? Uh, Ah, you want the microphone? This one? Sorry, I don't want to interrupt too much. That's fine. Yeah, I'm just saying that um, this I and I plus in the middle of the thing, right? The D0 and I dagger, D0. yes. Yeah, I and I dagger. Um, if you really quantize the D0, D8 string, yes. uh, because you have co-dimension one, yes. there's an ambiguity of the GSO projection. That's and, correct. But and on one side, this exists, and the other side is just all massive, if I, if I remember correctly. It correct. is correct, but this wall that you are talking about is in the B field space. So I'm talking uh, in, in the B field parameters. So Even when B is zero? No, when B is zero, there is no such thing. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's my point. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. When B is zero, this yeah. guy's, uh, the NS sector is massive, so there right, is no right. I. When I turn on B, instead, uh, I, may, I have it. I see, so, so that's, you're that's always working with B non zero. It's correct, okay. yes, yes. Right, so you always that, assume that this B is turned on. That's fine. Right, right. Otherwise, there is not. And that you may ask, uh, you may ask about wall crossing, for example, like you did, yeah. And so, so just uh, quickly, what, uh, what time? Um, how much time do I have? You have 15 minutes. 15. Okay, okay. So, quickly, just a reminder from in four dimensions, the relevant things are. Uh, so four dimension for the gauge theory, so the zero D4, and two dimension for the Young diagrams. I mean, the relevant objects are the Young diagrams, which is just, uh, I call it Y, is a collection of uh, non-negative integers, and it's decreasing. And uh, it will be relevant to have its size, which we denote uh, size Y, it's just the sum of the integer. And there is an inclusion relation, which is just uh, the, obvious one, the obvious one. So this is the picture. Then we can go up one dimension in 3D. I mean, there are many ways of thinking about, I just presented the recursive one which I think is uh, the most natural, for example, for computation. So the, the next step is the 3D, namely plane partitions. These are relevant for six-dimensional gauge theories, namely the 0D4, 0D6 gauge theories. And uh, you can think now of, of being in three dimension, uh, st stuck in cubes uh, under the, say, go in the first octant and uh, put some gravity and stuck in cubes uh, under that force and they will uh, assemble as a 3D partition. So a 3D partition rho is now a collection of Young diagrams such that it's again decreasing in the obvious sense and we can define its size which is the sum of the size uh, of the Young diagrams. And uh, again there is an inclusion between uh, say rho 1 and rho 2 if all uh, the Young diagrams of one, each, each Young diagram of one is contained in the correspo corresponding Young diagrams of two. And then the, relevant, the ones that are relevant for us are the four-dimensional or solid partitions, which are rele relevant for these uh, eight-dimensional gauge theories, or the zero, the eight. Okay, now I, I'm stuck in hypercube, so I, cannot, I do not know how to draw it, but this is meant to be the analog in four dimension of the previous picture. So you want to think, uh, yeah, presumably, there's many ways uh, of thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, this, uh, this way of thinking is like taking a slice. You, you cut it by a plane and you read a slice of plane partition. Presume, yeah, yeah. So for, for this, uh, I, I, I can again define the size, which is the sum of the sizes of the plane partition composing it. And I will 
all actually be interested, like I said, in colored solid partition, say of rank n, and this is just a vector of uh, solid partitions, pi1, pi n, where each pi i is a solid partition. And for, um, for, for uh, say, a, a, such an object, I will be interested in its character, which again I, I call capital K, capital K, which is the same letter I use for the vector space, so I'm, I'm uh, identifying both the vector space and its character. So now the character associated to this pi will depend on the q's and, and the, on the n's, and it will be a sum over alpha of the n alpha times the character of each pi alpha, so sum over a point. This is another, again, another way of thinking about is a tuples uh, for, for dimensional tuples of non-negative integers, a, b, c, d in, in pi alpha, and then I take q1 to the a minus 1 and q2, q3, q4, and so on. And, uh, okay, just a, it's not an observation, it's more like a curiosity, is that uh, for 2D and 3D that I presented before, the generative function is known by McMahon, I think, and, but in 4D instead it's not known, and it's, the people have only worked up, up to some size, say 672, or that order, so it, it's, it's not know, known how to do it in general. And uh, now I come to the, um, the actual computation, so let's go back to the, um, the index we want to compute, uh, which I called uh, in, in, the, in the beginning zeta k. And this, uh, in, the path integral, um, in the path integral language, has, uh, I mean, form, uh, let's write formally, is, is an integration on variables phi, and there will be an action, which I didn't write, uh, which is, will be a function of these phi's. And, uh, I mean, I also didn't write the supersymmetry transformations, but are the, more or less the standard ones. But anyway, the, the way that one can compute is that, uh, in principle, this would, would not have periodic boundary condition because it was twisted, but if we weakly gauge uh, this G, then we can, uh, there's a standard argument that the path integral can be written as a periodic boundary condition, and this omega is meant uh, to remind you that now the action itself depends on the parameter, so the same as uh, in, in the four-dimensional omega background, so I call it S omega. And now, in this step, we can apply, I would say, this, the standard localization uh, argument, for example, I mentioned before there is a, I mean, there are various papers studying this. For example, there is a nice paper by Ori that summarizes this uh, construction for all n equal to two system. There is also the previous work by Moore and Kras of Chattashvili that deals with uh, this kind of, uh, so depending on your, on your taste, you can. Uh... Anyhow, the, the, the procedure, the first uh, thing that, you have to, that one has to do is to, I mean, compute the wall-loop determinants of the field, and one gets a rational function, so just, by just inspecting the field content I presented in the table before, one can write down this uh, rational function, chi k, which is, uh, so, this product of a right different than j, this comes from the vector, this comes from the four, so the chiral multiplets, this comes from the Fermi multi multiplets, where here a goes to one to four, and here only to three, and this q a b is just a notation for q a times q b, and then there is, uh, so these are the, the i's, another chiral multiplet, which uh, give you a product over i and product over alpha and alpha minus xi. And these are the Fermi multiplet that I called uh, upsilon, which gives you m alpha, at, at the numerator, m alpha minus xi. And then the, the result, the, I mean, the, the, pr the procedure, the first step is that uh, the, the path integral, I mean, there are many subtleties related, for example, to having, uh, I mean, one, one applies localization and somehow would, wants to, the, the, the result turns out to be a residue. That's because uh, you, one applies uh, somehow Stokes theorem and worries about boundary terms, the same boundary terms that uh, give you wall crossing. And then by Stokes theorem, you can write it as a residue. So since we are in higher dimensions, the appropriate uh, tool uh, is this uh, object called uh, Jeffrey Kirwan residue, residue. So the result is one over k factorial because of just vile symmetry, and then sum over uh, some poles, so I call them u star, just because uh, for uh, uh, listing the poles is better to give, uh, to go to these variables. And then some, uh, some chi and a uh, residue to respect to the u. And the, the interesting thing is that, uh, I mean, the, the, the important thing is that uh, the poles will live in some uh, m singular, some space of, uh, of uh, singular hyperplanes, which are determined by chi, I mean, by the field content, and so by chi. And so where at least k linear independent hyperplanes meet, you define a place, you st a point u star, and then you can compute these objects, which, uh, so for each hyperplane arrangement defined by u star, you, you compute these objects, and these objects def depends on the, so this is another hint of wall crossing, depends on the Fayette-Heliopoulos zeta, not, not, not uh, 
punctually on, on zeta, just on the, on the chamber. This is just dependence on the chamber. So this is like a standard uh, argument. And then you can manipulate again this, uh, this, this expression to write, uh, to write it as a, a sum now over the real, the true fixed points, which are these colored solid partitions that I just uh, mentioned of, of size k, of course, uh, of uh, a standard residue, the standard iterated res residue of, of the same function chi. Now computed at the flag, now, I mean, the iterated residue, the appropriate way of doing it, one uh, appropriate way of doing it is define a flag. This flag will be given precisely by the content of pi. I mean, there, is, there will be a correspondence by the content of pi and the flag once we pick an ordering for the monomials in, in pi. And also, okay, we, I use violin variance to get rid of this k. This, this chi k is violin variance, so we can get rid of it. I mean, and also a curiosity is that uh, this residue itself was also studied by other people, by Parshin, by other mathematician. And again, they come up, uh, I mean, I say this because uh, they, both this JK and this uh, iterator residue, of course, have a, a representation in terms of cycles. So one is really integrating in, on some cycles. This is well defined. And uh, yeah, that's, that's okay, let, let, me, let me stop uh, at this, uh, in, the, in this slide. Yeah. Yes. Yes, 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 but remember that uh, I had a condition product over Qs uh, equal to one. Yeah. Yeah. No, actually, are you asking about value invariance? Of permutation of the Xi's or permutation of? So you're asking about the value symmetry of SU4. Yes, in that case, you need to enforce the condition product of the Qs equal to one, and then it will be, which uh, I, always, I always assume it. Uh, from this point, for, oh sorry, from this point on I assume it, otherwise it's not even supersymmetric. Yeah. And uh, let me see if I want to add something. Okay, yeah, now this is the result. Now I come to, uh, back to the, the conjecture that I introduced uh, in the beginning. And, that, and the conjecture is that uh, the zeta, the partition function, has a simple free field representation. So let's define the platistic exponent of some function f of x1, xr. As, I mean, it's the obvious way, so it's uh, pa, and it's defined as exp, sum over m to one to infinity, one over m, f of the product of the variables, x1 to the m, xr to the m. And then, if we do so, the conjecture states that if we take the generating function, the one that I wrote at the very beginning. Now the dependence on G is made precise in the sense that G is parameterized by the QAs, the NAs, and the M alpha. And the conjecture is that this guy is, is equal to the platistic exponent of a simple function Fn of Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, minus P, so dependence on P, and then the dependence on the Coulomb branch parameters and the masses is just through an overall product N over M alpha, where F, more explicitly, if we define bracket of T, as t to the one half minus t to the minus one half, then f has the form bracket q12, q13, q23, which I remember, remind you q12 is q1, q2, divided bracket q1, q2, q3, q4. Then the argument I call s effective, so bracket of s effective divided by bracket of p times square root of s effective times bracket of p over square root of s effective. So this is like a simple um, conjecture that we tested up to some order and so on. On the right, n, you, you are asking the rank. I say again. Yes? Yes, yes, I understand. Well, it's just, uh, I mean, it's this, the form is the same. It will be just in the, in the variable as effective, but formally is. Yes, so in, it's in the, in the form of this guy. But no, but you are right. Formally, F, I could have dropped that n because it's it's in here if you want. That's that's true. That's true. And uh, okay, I, I I have a few minutes, right? Or okay, good, good, good. So I mean, it's, no, it's it's just a, a variable that I write here to. to I mean, it's just a dummy variable that I use. Uh, so the, the, the conjecture is that uh, 
the, the guy is equal to PA with this argument. So that the depends on n is in, in here. It's just I, I, I just write a dummy variable. It's like an effective because it's a U, effective U1. It's a product of all the guys divided that way. So in the last, uh, in the last uh, few minutes, I just uh, described some mathematical properties of this, uh, this construction. And um, it goes as, fol as follows. We can uh, introduce uh, a tangent space to this uh, instant moduli space. Yes, yes, thank you. We can introduce a tangent space at a fixed point. So the fixed point will be fixed by some torus section, and the torus section was the maximal torus of G flavor. And the fixed point we know is uh, given by a color solid partition. And the, the tangent I call T, and will be equal to N minus M star times K, minus the product from one to three, one minus QA, K, K star, which we think of it as, we think of as a virtual character, namely, I, I had before the spaces N and M, and I identify them with their characters, which are just some, over the, some of the Ns and some of the Ms for M. And again, K was the, the character of the solid partitions that I defined a few slides back. And star just means uh, to replace uh, each of these variables, uh, QA and alpha and so on, by their inverse. And uh, okay, you, can, uh, you could guess that this is already I mean, you could guess that this is like the square root of, the, of what you would expect to be the, the tangent to this, uh, to, to, to this moduli space. And in fact, I, I say this because there will be issues with orientations. Namely, one will, since we are taking a square root, one will, be, will have to be careful in, in picking correctly the signs. Otherwise, this is just the, the trivial, uh, I mean, this is also what happens in the 0 d6, the 0 d4. There, you don't have this issue. So that's why I'm pointing out. So the first fact, is that uh, if, you, if we pick a generic uh, parameters uh, m alpha and n alpha, generic means that they are not functions of the, of the queues, uh, which, which, by the way, was also an assumption in the localization computation. Otherwise, uh, somehow you have to resolve it and go back to the generate cases. Then uh, the tangent uh, at, some, at, uh, at some solid partition is movable. Where movable means that, uh, okay, let me explain uh, a bit better. So the tangent, uh, T, once we write all the characters, is a, a sum of monomials in the Q's, Q inverse, Ns, and so on. Sum of monomials with plus or minus signs. And actually, you can, if you look at it, you can convince yourself that there is a, an, the same number of uh, monomials with the plus sign and the same number of monomials with the minus signs. And there, may be, and there, may be cancel, there, there will be, in general, cancellations with, among them. And there will be also, there may also be plus minus one factors. The statement uh, that this guy is movable is that there are no, uh, after you simplify, of course, there are no plus minus one factors in this sum. And, uh, and this is a fact that you can prove uh, rigorously. And the second fact is um, points that the, I mean, in words, is telling you what you expect, so that this tangent space picture is equivalent to, res to the residue picture modulo uh, the this, this sign that I was talking about. So concretely, it, it, the, the statement is that uh, the iterated res residue of chi k that, I, that was, uh, in the, it was uh, at the end of this slide is equal, uh, at, at some colored uh, solid partitions pi, is equal to uh, some function of the tangent at, at again, pi, up to a certain well-defined sign, which I call uh, minus one to the h of pi, and this sign has to do with orientations, namely, how we, I mean, it's, it's, it's a concrete function of the partitions that has the interpretation of uh, orientation of the deformation and abstraction bundle to the moduli space. And uh, finally, the last thing I said, this map, uh, A hat, uh, that I wrote there, is just a map that acts on monomial. So if you have monomial R, R and S in the tangent, then A, A, A hat of R is just one over bracket R, and it converts sums to products. And uh, notice that uh, this thing is well defined because t is movable. Otherwise, there will be plus either zero or infinity factors. But since it's movable, this is well defined. And this is just a map that converts uh, the tangent to a product of weights in the equivalent k theory. So, yeah, I think uh, I stop here. So, thank you for uh, your attention. Questions for Nicole?